Hyderabad to Bangalore in about 2 hours. Chennai to Hyderabad in roughly 2 hours 20 minutes. Chennai to Bangalore in under 90 minutes. These are not fantasy numbers from Japan or Europe. These are the kind of travel times India is planning for its own high-speed rail corridors in southern India. In this video, let's break down what actually is happening with these bullet train projects in the south, how they could change your daily life, and why development in North India's high-speed rail network will decide how quickly this dream becomes reality. India's vision is to create 7,000 km plus high-speed rail grid connecting major economic hubs across the country. The first real step is Mumbai Ahmedabad High Speed Rail Corridor. This is India's flagship Shinkansen based project designed for 320 km per hour with viaducts, tunnels, river bridges, and stations already under active construction. Initial operations on a major section in Gujarat are targeted for the second half of this decade, with the full corridor expected soon after. Around this spine, Major corridors are in different stages of planning and DPR preparation. They are Delhi Varanasi, Delhi Ahmedabad, Delhi Amritsar via Chandigarh, Mumbai Nagpur, Mumbai Hyderabad, Chennai Bengaluru Mysuru, Hyderabad Chennai and Hyderabad Bengaluru. South India's routes are part of this larger national grid, not isolated projects. That means funding, technology choices, and lessons from Mumbai Ahmedabad will directly shape timelines in the south. Let's start with Hyderabad Chennai because this is the one that has just taken a visible step forward. The proposed corridor is roughly 770 to 780 kilometers long and is designed as a greenfield high speed line. The key recent development is that the final alignment have been submitted to Tamil Nadu government for approval with a major alignment tweak. Instead of going via Gudur, the route now includes high speed stop at Tirupati. That's a big win for both pilgrims and regional economy. Right now, this corridor is in the final location survey and DPR refinement stage. Survey teams are freezing the exact route, station locations and land requirements. Once Tamil Nadu and Telangana formally sign off alignment and land acquisition, the DPR can be finalized and then the file moves to the Railway Board, Niti Aayog and Finance Ministry and finally the Cabinet for approval. If everything goes smoothly, approvals, land acquisition, financing, international partnerships, this type of project still needs 8 to 10 years for full construction and testing. Realistically, you should think of Hyderabad Chennai high speed service as a 2040 ish story and not a 2030 story. But the decisions being taken today will decide where the stations come up, which land values rise, and where new jobs get created. The second southern corridor is Hyderabad Bengaluru. This one also appears in the national high speed grid and has been mentioned by state leadership in Andhra Pradesh as a part of four city chain, Hyderabad, Bengaluru, Chennai and Amravati. Here, detailed surveys and DPR work are under progress or being commissioned. You can think of it being in a similar planning bracket, alignment studies, feasibility, cost benefit analysis, station sitting and land mapping. Once the DPR is ready, it follows the same pipeline of approvals. In terms of timelines, official planning document puts southern high speed rail corridors mostly in the 2040 horizon. So, for a citizen in Hyderabad and Bengaluru, the impact today is more about future proofing. Watching which peri-urban areas are being talked about as a potential station zones. Understanding that once such a line opens, your practical labor market suddenly includes another metro city within a two-hour commuting radius. This is how regions like Tokyo, Osaka or Madrid, Barcelona evolved. Not overnight, but once the line opened, these two cities behaved almost like a single integrated economic zone. The third corridor in the southern cluster is Chennai, Bengaluru, Mysuru. The high speed portion between Chennai and Bengaluru is about 300 kilometers, with an extended alignment to Mysuru taking full length to roughly 450 460 kilometers. This route is extremely important because it links. Chennai's port and manufacturing belt, Bengaluru's IT and startup ecosystem, and 
Mysuru's tourism and emerging services economy. Currently, work here is largely at the survey and DPR stage under central agencies. Station locations near major nodes like Whitefield, Electronic City or satellite townships around Chennai are being examined from the perspective of demand, land and integration with existing rail metro networks. Again, this is not a project that will open in the next few years. But when it does, you are looking at Chennai-Bengaluru trip time dropping to under 90 minutes. Daily businesses commutes between the two cities become normal and a major shift in where companies choose to put offices, data center and logistic hubs. Let's talk about what this actually means for people living in southern India beyond just cool train videos. Today, if you live in Tirupati, Vellore or districts between the metros, a job in Hyderabad, Chennai or Bengaluru usually means relocation. With high-speed rail, staying in your hometown but working in a big metro becomes realistic for a section of population, particularly in higher skilled, predictable hours job. Students could travel for coaching, exams or weekend classes across cities in a single day, leave in the morning, come back in the night. Similarly, people needing specialized medical care in metro hospitals would gain faster, more predictable access, which matters in emergencies and for regular follow-ups. Every high-speed station is a potential economic node. Around these stations, you can expect new residential townships, office spaces, IT parks, malls and hotels, and multimodal hubs connecting to metro, buses and conventional rail. Land prices around the confirmed station locations typically see a sharp rise years before the line opens. For ordinary citizens, this is an opportunity and a risk. Good if you own land early, challenging if you are a tenant or a small business pushed out by rising rents. High-speed rail makes spontaneous travel feasible. Weekend trips from Bengaluru to Hyderabad or Chennai become a normal as Mumbai-Pune drives today. Pilgrimage circuits, for example, Tirupati Chennai Vellore and coastal tourism in Tamil Nadu and Andhra Pradesh could see a big gain. From a system perspective, moving large volumes of passengers from short haul flights and long road trips to an electrified high speed rail can cut passenger emissions, reduce highway congestion and accidents, and freeze up airport capacity for longer haul international routes. Now, how does North India fit into this story and what does it mean for the balance of growth between North and South? Apart from Mumbai Ahmedabad, some of the most advanced proposals are in the Northern Belt. Delhi Varanasi, linking the national capital with the Eastern UP heartland and religious hubs. Delhi Amritsar via Chandigarh, tapping into industrial, agricultural and tourism potential. Delhi Ahmedabad, creating a high-speed spine from capital towards the western corridor. If these lines move faster into construction and operation, North and West India may actually experience the first wave of high-speed driven growth. Tier 2 cities like Varanasi or Chandigarh become genuine alternatives to Delhi for offices and high-skilled jobs. Tourism circuit, for example, Delhi Agra Varanasi or Delhi Amritsar can be done on high-speed rail instead of congested highways. Industries currently over-concentrated around NCR may start shifting along the high-speed rail axis where the land is cheaper but connectivity is world-class. From a national point of view, this is healthy. India had a long a narrative of South being ahead of services, education and urban governance, while large part of North lag behind human development indicator. If North India gets serious high-speed rail connectivity first and uses it well, it can pull more private investments into the northern states, create a new productivity corridor outside NCR, and narrow the gap in opportunities between a student, say Varanasi or Kanpur, and one in Chennai or Bangalore. At the same time, southern corridors tying Hyderabad, Chennai, Bangalore, and Amravati together will help the south avoid over-congestion in just a few megacities. Talents and capital can then flow more evenly across the region. 
In the best case scenario, high speed rail does not create a new north versus south divide. It gives both regions powerful tools to grow faster and more evenly, provided state governments coordinate on land, metro integration, zoning, and do not treat stations as just real estate deals, but as a true multimodal hubs. So what should you watch for if you are personally interested in this? Does the Mumbai Ahmedabad corridor meets its phase opening targets and ridership expectation? Are the South Indian states quickly clearing alignment and land for Hyderabad Chennai, Hyderabad Bangalore and Chennai Bangalore Mysore? Or are the metro station bus systems and city planners being updated around the future bullet train stations? If the answer is yes, then within our lifetimes, India could have a genuine interconnected high-speed rail network in both north and south, and that will fundamentally change where we live, work, and study. If you found this breakdown useful, please share it with someone who regularly travels between these cities. Subscribe to Search Pulse for more deep dives into Indian Railway, Metro projects, and comment below which corridor you are most excited about, Hyderabad Chennai, Hyderabad Bangalore, Chennai Bangalore, or one of the North Indian routes. Thanks a lot.